Yeah, tell me that. Do we have a phone call? It sounded like someone blew into a jug. No, it sounded sound like a vibrate. Oh. Okay, we'll see. We're good? Yes. All right, we're going to do a song for y'all. This is one that I wrote called Maybelline. She was a lover, her daughter. She is loved, she is alone, loved by alone. have you seen from people around the world to what you guys are doing? It's been different, but very positive in every place we've been to. Um, as you said, we were in Central Asia, but we started in Pakistan, and our most recent trip was Brazil, and people there were so awesome. The first venue we played, the, the amount of people that could fit in the venue, the double that number showed up. And they all stood in line, and we played two shows that night. Half of them just waited outside during the first show. They were so enthusiastic. You know, ha have bluegrass bands gone to Pakistan before as part of this program, or are you the first? I think maybe we are. Um, I can't say that for sure, uh, but I do know that the places that we played, um, they really hadn't seen much live music actually so we played at a couple women's colleges and the first time we played at uh, Fatima Jinnah University really the the women were literally ripping the doors off the hinges mm -hmm. they opened them because they were afraid that they were gonna break the doors down um, and this was our first concert so we came uh, into the auditorium and there was this group of screaming women there and they were just so excited to see the music whether it was bluegrass or country or hip-hop they didn't really care they mm -hmm. just wanted to be there and experience that 
Now, when you go to a different country and um, you know your build is a bluegrass band, is that the way you describe your music to other people in other places? Do you, do you consider yourself a bluegrass band, first of all? <laughs> Our music is so malleable. Mm -hmm. We have so many different backgrounds individually, and what we create is kind of a mesh of all of those backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We've been doing bluegrass programs throughout the world and teaching people about Bill Monroe and about the mandolin and guitar and fiddle and, uh, but you know, we, we kind of just do a mixture of a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Call it what you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time in the foreign countries, we kind of have to break it down and say our music is traditional American country music. <laughs> the, oh. <laughs> that's, gets the the translation calls. for bluegrass is a tough one, actually. <laughs> right. You play a music of the color of plant. A plant? <laughs> when you're there, are, are you taking in influences of music that you're hearing there as well mm. and trying to incorporate that? I mean, how far afield do you go to, to take your influences and, and bring them back in? That's a huge part of what we're doing there is collaboration. Mm -hmm. So every, pretty much every single concert we do, we have another local band, mostly traditional musicians. And so we collaborate and do some of their songs, they do some of our songs. And so in that way, we get to learn from each other and sometimes it ends up, we have people I think that we'll be friends with, hopefully for a very mm -hmm. long time through those collaborations. But we definitely bring back a lot of those influences and hopefully share some on their end as well. Is there any music that you've heard on your travels that you thought, you know, we gotta crib that, we gotta, you know, figure out how to get that into our music? Is there a style that seems simpatico with what you're doing? I think, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think rhythmically, I mean, we were just in Brazil mm -hmm. and the Choro music there mm -hmm. is yeah. so fun. And what they have going on rhythmically, it's just, it makes you want to move and it makes, helps you connect to the music. So for me personally, like, I would love to, you know, Jenny Lynn could slay some Choro grooves, you know, so I think... That, for instance, is a great thing to bring back. Um, one thing I really connected with in Pakistan was Kavali singing, Kavali mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. um, we played with a man uh, in Pakistan ca called Abbas, mm -hmm. and um, he had the most beautiful voice, and he did all these really improvisational maneuvers with his, his voice, and just they fit right into our music. Mm -hmm. I really gravitated towards that. Just the feeling that he put into um, the melodies, yeah, it, it kind of changed the way I think about singing. Um, the strength that we have is that we are all from such different backgrounds mm -hmm. that um, it, it's somehow able to coalesce into a piece at the end of it. You know, for instance, I started in rock and roll and gospel, uh, Jenny Lynn's real like old school bluegrass, but they really cohabitate very well. Um, so Courtney and I do most of the writing for the, this band and we always just take a skeleton of a piece and bring it to the band and then they add their other elements in. There's no thought really of, oh, let's add, let's make this more like that song or this more like that song. In general, we just wanna make good music that people like to listen to and um, our, our different influences just kind of happen naturally. It's hard not to notice that you're both playing Guitars made by our very own guitar guru, Dana Bourgeois. <laughs> um, how did you come upon that relationship? Uh, you, you first started playing his mm -hmm. guitars? Yeah, I met Dana when I was like 15 mm -hmm. at NAMM, and I would just go and like sit in his booth and, and play guitars, and hopefully like I could talk to him. Um, <laughs> but a couple years ago, he loaned me a guitar to use on a tour in Germany, and I got back, and he... Has, since then, um, built this guitar for me like two years ago, mm -hmm. two and a half years ago, and its name is Diablo, <laughs> because when he, when he played it for his son, his son said, uh, Dad, you must have sold your soul to the devil for that guitar, which he did. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a real Robert <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, it's Rosewood. I like it a lot. It has a lot of, I've put some, some wear and tear on it, mm -hmm. but it's a good one. And yeah. then this one, you, you said he also loaned you and it yeah. sort of stayed with you. So I just recently acquired this guitar. Um, well, actually not super recently, but Dana is a very smart man, not only being an incredible luthier, but he came to a show that I was playing in Portland, Maine, and uh, said, hey, do you want to play this guitar? And I said, well, yes, I do, Dana. So I played it, and... Um, and it kind of ca came home with me, and I ended up writing a lot of songs on this guitar. And why I say he's smart is because 
something really special for me at least happens when your voice blends with the tone of an instrument and the resonance and when you're writing a song it just kind of becomes sort of invaluable and you it's like being addicted to a certain sound and I was playing a Martin for a while and the difference um, for me just tonally and the the mix with my voice became really powerful for me so I eventually called him up and I said listen Dana um, I kind of have fallen in love with this guitar I think I'd like to take it out on the road and give it a spin. And he said, all right, come on up and we'll put a pickup in it. So, mm -hmm. but it's beautiful. It's mahogany, OM style. Mm -hmm. I just really love it. Mm -hmm. You know, how difficult was it to scare up this crew here? <laughs> <laughs> scare them up. Um, well, yeah, I just, I really wanted to create something that was a showcase for female female musicians and not just female musicians, but female musicians who could improvise. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just being in the music industry, I kind of just wanted to create what my dr uh, dream job would be. Mm -hmm. you know? So it took a lot of uh, a lot of research and a lot of calling up friends and saying, hey, do you know, I didn't know any of these girls actually mm -hmm. when I had the idea of starting the band. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of friends. So uh, on that note of, you know, you wanted to women who were going to be in a band who were going to be improvisers. Um, the, you know, that's something you, you run up against uh, when, you, when you look at popular music. You know, you have female singer-songwriters, and very seldom do you see them up there shredding on a guitar mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. instrument. Um, why do you think that is? I don't know. I hope things are changing, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's sort of the, the reason for this band, mm -hmm. is that I'd really love to inspire young players to follow, you know, follow that path, mm -hmm. whether they be men or women eventually in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just something that, that I noticed uh, there wasn't a lot of. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe it's because of the, the traditional roles of women and men and how, uh, you know, women end up having children and don't want to spend a lot of time on the road. and. I mean, there's a billion reasons, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think it has to do with you want to do what you see. And if you're a little girl and you only see women singing, right. maybe you, I want to do that. I want right. to sing. But if you see someone like Courtney shredding the guitar, you know, maybe these little girls are going to be like, I can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. whereas formerly, there are only a handful of women who can flat pick like Courtney. So, you know, hopefully just by I mean and we're not like rah rah girl band we just want to play good music and stand up there and let that speak for itself mm -hmm. um, you know so hopefully like Kimber said it will inspire another generation this is one of our tunes Heaven's Gate and it's a ghost story <laughs>
back someday. Oh, I've tried, I've tried to make my way from you, but I'm stuck at heaven's gate. I'm stuck at heaven's gate.